Hi, and welcome to another tutorial for our SQL database application. So in this part of the tutorial, we're going to go to this section here called compound queries. So we're going to combine one result with another, and we're just going to refactor some of the code that we developed in earlier sections. So here's the design that I'm referring to. So on the left, we have the UML and we have the right, which is an ER diagram. So we're going to be modifying our model here. So you can see about the last line in the album properties is a list of tracks. And so that's what we're going to implement here in this video. My name is Shad Sluter and I teach software development at Grand Canyon University. So welcome to class. Make sure that you check out studycoding.org to get the full playlist and other courses as well. I want you to come along and become a software engineer just like many of my students. So just to be clear, the application that you see is going to look the same. So I've got the same actions going on here. So when I select an album, I have the uh, tracks appear in the second table on the application form. So we're not changing the look, we're just changing the design. So let's get started in the code. So the first place I want to go is into the albums class. And some time ago, I left a note here that said we're going to later make a list of tracks as part of the properties here. And so that's what we're going to do right now. So I want to show that we have a list of type track and we're going to use the get and set properties and make it public. The next part we're going to adopt here is the albums DAO. So I've collapsed all of the methods that are in this class just so that we can get a summary of what we've made. So you can see we have a method to get all the albums, to search for albums by title, to add an album, and then we have two different selectors at the bottom. One is getting the tracks for the album, and then the second item here was also for getting tracks using a join statement. So joining meant that we could uh, have a flexible number of columns. So we're going to be modifying these, the get all albums uh, method here and we're going to use the get tracks for album as a kind of a secondary helper. So let's get into the get all albums. So you can see that I'm inserting right below the place where we just fetched a new album. I'm going to now add the tracks property to this uh, uh, variable called a. So a.tracks equals. And then I can go to another method in this, uh, in this class here to get those tracks. So get tracks for album is another helper method we're going to use. Now the part that's missing here is that it's expecting a number. So let's type in A and let's get at the, uh, let's see, I think it's the ID number. Yes, it is. So if we provide the ID number for this album, we should be able to get all the tracks and then add them to the list of things that we're returning. So that's a small change here, but it's going to allow us to save all the tracks at the same time we fetch the album. Now that we've returned all the tracks as well as the album, we can modify what we do in our form one. So here we are in form one. I'm going to the very top and I'm gonna add one new item. So I'm going to save a global list of albums that we can refer to after it's been fetched. So we'll make a list called albums. Now just to prove to you that I can use this list, I'm going to define it here in line 21. And I'm going to fetch all the albums and assign it to this list. And then on the next step down, let's assign the data source for the control to the list. So it's an intermediate step. We've just kind of a temporary placeholder, but we can fetch this again without going back to the database. And you'll see that in a second. Now there is an important difference though. So the albums now contain a property that includes the list of all tracks. So we don't have to go back later and fetch those again. So the next section I want to work on is down here in the data grid view click and event item. So when we click an event in the current stage, what we have right here are several lines that go back to the database to get the tracks. And that's where we're going to change the main point of this lesson. So right now it is going to the database to get its values. And we're just now going to use the list that we have stored in memory. So I have to know that on line 46, I know which row number was clicked. So that also tells me which album was clicked. So let's use that to our advantage. So I can wipe out any reference to the database now. And it's uh, next is to just get the item that was clicked. And so albums at row clicked. And that tells me which row number of which album it is. And I'll just swipe the tracks from that list. It's already been saved there. So I just reference it. So let's see if that works. I'm going to run the app now. All right, here we go. So I'm going to choose load albums and let it fetch from the database. There's my list. So let's go ahead and click something like help 
and see what we get. So we can see that one of the tracks is help and the other two. So Abbey Road, what does it contain? It shows come together and uh, here comes the sun. So we've got ourselves a list that appears to work the same as it did before, but we've just refactored it. Now one final word about doing compound uh, queries. As you can see here in the album's DAO, I am referring to the database twice. So in the second time, when I go and get the tracks, I am going through another loop. So the more times you add a request inside of a request, your database uh, response time will become less and less. So be careful how many times you are calling references to another table because you are growing exponentially in the complexity of your for loops. So if you select something in a for loop and then another thing inside that for loop, uh, you're going from squared to cubed and to quadrupled in the power. So uh, you can really slow down your database with these kinds of reactions. Now there are ways to make this work better, including indexing, or if you go to a different uh, structure altogether instead of SQL, you could work with maybe a, a NoSQL database such as MongoDB. But that's for another course, and so we're trying to learn SQL right now. So we're going to do some deletions from the database, and also I promised you that we're going to have a, a video player, so we'll, maybe we'll sneak that in next time. See you soon.